Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, wake up. What for? Say, how long have you been awake and not <laughs> saying anything about it? Yeah, wouldn't you like to know? How can you bear to lie awake and see me sleeping? I can't bear it when it's vice versa. Yeah, it's no problem at all. Those are delicious moments when all is peace and quiet. And you, my love, are silent beyond belief. Mm, you've been awake quite a while. I can see that. Anyway, good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you today? Mm, not a complaint in the world. Good. You look without a complaint, too. Nice and rested and... Waking up in the mornings is certainly the worst part when you are in the hospital. No one to talk to. No one to talk to. Except Shakespeare. He was very devoted while you were away. He purred all night at the foot of the bed. <laughs> and in the morning, he'd come right over to me and stare at me till I woke up. <laughs> I think he knew how lonely I was. Well, maybe he was lonely, too, if you stopped to think of that. Mm. Oh, this is a wonderful morning. Your hair's all tousled. You look about eight. I wish I'd known you then. Hey, what is all this sentimentality? Sentiment, not sentimentality, please. Sorry? It's an early morning habit with me. It comes to waking up after a beautiful sleep. I didn't dream at all. Now, that's not normal. Who cares? Well... I'm getting up. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. Why not? Because I haven't told you what I woke up to tell you yet. Only, only you didn't wake me because I was awake. That is a detail. All right. All right, out with it. Hurry up. Well, it's a beautiful day out. Just beautiful. So I noticed. Is that all you have to say about it? What else do you want? Well, don't you realize what a beautiful day means? Mm -hmm. God's in his heaven. All's right with the world. Robert Browning. Poof. I was going to give you a Claudia Norton. Oh. Well, all right, all right. Now, what does a beautiful day mean? David, you haven't forgotten, have you? What a beautiful day means? Dr. Barry said you could go out on the first beautiful day. And this is the first one since he said that. Mm, you don't say. Then you did remember. That's what you were lying awake waiting for. <laughs> Not a cloud in the sky. And Matthew Warren's cattle lowing as clear as if they were in our own backyard. I wish we had a cattle all our own. Oh, well, you have a pig. That's why we need a cow. Say that again? Well, just having a pig is doing it halfway. Doing what? The farm. Oh, the farm. Well, you know what I mean. Now, don't pretend to be so droopy. Just look at that sky. When are we going to go out? Now. We haven't had breakfast. Fiddlesticks to breakfast. We can have breakfast any other day. You shouldn't go out without your breakfast. Sensible people always take a constitutional before breakfast. It gives them an appetite. I always have an appetite for breakfast. I suppose it's because I haven't eaten for so long. Now, do as you like. I'm going out for my walk now. I'll be dressed in two seconds, so if you don't hurry... Hey, you got up without saying a decent good morning to me. No time for that now. I've got my socks on. David, dress warmly. Sure, I will. Putting on your woolen socks? What on earth for? For your feet to keep them warm. They'll be warm. Not without woolen socks, they won't. Well, you dress your feet. I'll dress mine. Catch cold. You haven't been out of the house in weeks, and now all of a sudden you want to go running around in your bare feet without breakfast in your stomach. I'm not running around in my bare feet, and they have nothing to do with my stomach. Oh, yes, they now, do. Now, you listen to me, young woman. Just because I was in a car accident three weeks ago... And you were almost killed. ...doesn't mean that I'm going to allow myself to be pampered for the rest of my life. David, I'm not pampering you. I just want you to be sensible. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Can anybody tell you anything without you getting angry? I'm not angry, darling. We, we just have to get this business settled once and for all. I'm well now. I feel fine. I feel wonderful. I'm not going to be foolhardy and do a lot of things that aren't good for me. I, I know that the aftermaths of a concussion can be serious, and I realize that my collarbone isn't completely mended, so, so I'll be careful. Now, can't you trust me in that? 
Well, I'm just so grateful to have you back. Too grateful, maybe, but I can't help it, David, because I know what it was like when I thought you might not come back. Well, I'm not scolding you for that. How could I? But you just have to realize that I'm all right again. I can't drive a car, maybe, and turn a somersault in the air, but otherwise I'm all right. I realize, I guess. Good. Then we won't have to talk about it anymore. Not another word. Here. Here's a kiss on it. David. What? Just as a favor, would you wear woolen socks? Mm, no, my good great aunt. After all I've said, all right, I'll wear them. I'll wear them. Give them to Here, me. Here, Captain. put them on or something. Don't scowl. Now, hurry up and get dressed. I'm a lot more interested in getting out into that fresh air than in socks or anything else right now. I'm dressed way ahead of you. <laughs> I'll be ready and waiting for you. You'll see. That would mean the end of the world. It's nothing but a superstition. What is? This business of men always having to wait for women. Yeah, superstition, nothing. Oh, yes, it is. It's one of those things that make a man feel like a man. David, I put the toothpaste on your brush for you. Mm, good service in this hotel. Say, um, Claudia, what makes a man feel like a man? Complaining he has to wait for his wife is typical of the sex, like shaving. Claudia, you're getting toothpaste all over the floor. Where? Here. Where? Right here. Wait till I get up here. Yeah. Oh, well. Now, get back over the basin where you belong. You asked me a question. I was only being sociable. Hmm. It's typical of a woman to always be late. If I were brushing my teeth, I'd tell you a thing or two. Actions speak louder than words. There. I'm all washed and brushed and practically dressed. So, who's almost ready first? You'll see. The basin's all yours. I'm now waiting for you, my love. Oh, I hate you. Yes, waiting for the woman I married. But I'm not complaining. Ha, much you're not complaining. My only complaint, and it's a small one, is that man the bachelor is not sufficiently forewarned about man the husband. It should be in each marriage vow, you know. What should? Oh, where's my cold? Here. Yes, in each marriage oh, vow, the line should read... Wilt thou promise to love, honor, and wait for this woman? Very funny. Mm, too true to be funny. Well, you don't have to put yourself out anymore. I am ready. Oh, so quick. Oh, such cutting sarcasm. Allow me to tell you, woman I wait for, that you are a very cute trick in those slacks. Sweet talk won't make up for what else you've said. Mm, didn't expect it would. Come on, let's go. The day waits without. Without what? Oh. I will ignore <laughs> what you consider humor. After you, madame. <sighs> Such a beautiful day, too. It's much too beautiful to be kept waiting without. My goodness, the house is still. Mama must be asleep and Bertha's giving the baby his bottle. He's quiet, too, for a while. I guess Fritz is up at the barn. We are lucky, aren't we, David? You bet we are. Like wood. Maybe I ought to go kiss the baby good morning. You just said he was asleep. Oh, it's not for him. It's for me. Well, in that case, we can save the ritual until after our walk and breakfast. Heartless. Well, there lies the great outdoors. To smell the air. It's so clean and cool. Mm. I can feel it all up around my throat. Like a kiss. You warm enough? Mm-hmm. Look at the fog clinging to the side of the hill. The dew's so heavy, the sun rising makes it fog. We'll walk on the path. Oh, David, all this on our own doorstep. And still people fight wars. <laughs> I'll never know why. Sounds like Bluff. Hey, Bluff. Somebody told him you were going to be out this morning. <laughs> Great Danes don't have to be told. No dog does. Look at him come running across the field. <laughs> Over the fence he Look went. Look at him. <laughs> He's been visiting Matthew Warren's police dog. <laughs> Bluff and she are great friends. Nothing serious, I hope. Mm, I don't think so. Yet. <laughs> hey, come on, boy. Easy, boy. He's so excited at seeing you. <laughs> come on, it's easy, wonderful. boy. Oh, hello there, Bluff. Oh. Hello there, you big Gosh, it must come be on. awful to be a family without a dog. Well, it's not a family without a dog. Or a man. Say, Bluff, 
You want to come for a walk with us, boy? Hmm? I'll say he does. <laughs> David, look how he wags his tail. He looks as if he was doing a rumba. <laughs> mm. All right, then, Bluff. Now, you can come along. But uh, let me tell you something now. Now, listen, listen. Hold still. Listen. Shh. Be quiet. Now, you have to be very quiet about this walk you're going to take. I, I don't think he's bright enough to understand English. Well, he understands, but it's not the English. Which way will we walk? How about the path to the hill? The sun was raised, or it is such a slant. The days have become so short. It's three weeks since you were out, darling. Three long weeks. Oh, so it is. Well, nature seems to have made the most of them, hasn't she? She doesn't have to wait ever for anything. Next thing we know, the leaves will be all on the ground and it'll be winter. Winter's so bare. Oh, you'll like it in the country. Quiet and white and, and private. Mm, maybe I will like it when the snow comes. No day, spring, summer, winter. Nothing could be like today. All the color, all the ripeness. Look at it. Most people think that fall is sad. They're crazy, it isn't. Fall is summer, all worked up into a state of excitement. So excited, it just can't bear it anymore. All the leaves changing color. Apples falling off the trees. The wind coming to after the heat. Whipping everything up. The whole pace of everything is different. It's as if life had grown and gathered its strength all summer, and now it's it quickened. All at once, everything's different. I can, I can feel it right through me. It's like, it's like having a taste of eternity. What greater gift or, or privilege? None. Except maybe that you're here and. Mm-hmm. And that we're having our taste together. The world can have its eternity, darling. I have you. Next time you're buying household supplies in the grocery or drugstore, step over to the display rack and pick up one of those handy carry-home cartons of Coca-Cola. The six-bottle cartons are only a quarter, and they provide refreshment for the family and hospitality for guests. Hey, Joe. Joe, have you got a moment? Certainly, David. What's up? I just thought you might like to come up to our hill and take a good look at the countryside. Oh, I certainly would like to do it that, David. It's quite a sight. If I were an artist and saw it, I'd stop painting. You know, I suspect that you're going to hate the day you have to start going back to work. Mm, what day is? It's tomorrow or the next, too. I'm well again. It's time to get back into harness. Yep. What must be done? Uh... Must be done. Yeah, uh, Roger's coming up tomorrow to say hello. Suppose he'll be happy I'm coming back to the office, or am I being conceited? Well, any other man would be delighted, but your partner is a very exceptional gent. I wouldn't predict his reactions. No, not Roger's. Well, we'll see. Now, about this view from the hill. Well, I'll be with you as soon as I say that every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Star. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.